This is perhaps the best part of our experience is that we were able to rule in at least 22% of the time patients that had some atrial activity. 6% of patients had real non-convulsive status. They were airlifted and transferred or you just couldn't like treat them and then remain in status. They were airlifted and, 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 and sent to our... Um, uh, our, our main hospital, which is uh, uh, Cooper in Camden. 16% uh, had also significant seizure activity that somehow uh, either responded to uh, some initial interventions. And then finally, right, almost 80% of our cohort, right, we ruled out any seizure activity. Now, so remember what I said in terms of uncertainty. When you are dealing with this and you are not monitoring, you are dealing with a lot of uncertainty, you may expose patients to unnecessary treatments. And not doing that in at least 80% of your patient population, right, that can translate significantly into a lot of benefits, as I will summarize uh, in, in the next slide. Next slide. So 78%, you know, um, you know, more than two-thirds of the cohort, we uh, excluded uh, you know, uh, seizure activity, non-convulsive status. We didn't treat unnecessarily. These patients did not transfer. There are some unquantified benefits with this, you know, patient satisfaction, uh, family pa of the patient satisfaction, uh, you know, nursing staff satisfaction. You just cannot quantify uh, these benefits, but they're inherent. They're there. Um, these patients were not treated blindly. We were able to determine that they did not require any aggressive uh anti-epileptic or anesthetic or anything, uh, you know, that require uh, drips or intuition and did, did not go through our seizure pathway. Sort of like a classic seizure pathway, right? You, you load them and then you get a second agent. And then if, if, if you think that they're still seizing, you just put them on propofol and then you wait till the next day till the uh, epileptologist comes in to rule out. Next slide. So this is what I mentioned, you know, the potential sort of like uh, benefits uh, out there that could be quantified and some potential benefits that could not uh, uh, be quantified. I mentioned this before. It changed the way that we look at continuous EEG. You know, when, you, when you're thinking about continuous EEG, you may have a selection bias, right? You may be sort of like, uh, you know, thinking, you know, uh, in, in a different way. Having point of care EEG available to you, right? Um, you know, can give you very good information, important information about what the patient, um, you know, is having at that point, at that point in time. So eliminating the uncertainty, in my opinion, is one of the, you know, most significant benefits of, of point of care EEG. The faster that the technology gets deployed, the faster the uh, treatments uh, are available for the patient if they rule in for seizures or non-convulsive status, right? And because, right, they are getting better, then the recovery may be better. And conversely, if you are not over-treating, right, those patients also would benefit from it, less sedation, less exposure to the possibility of a tracheostomy, the possibility of ventilator pneumonia, complications of being sedated in the intensive care unit, uh, et cetera. So they would have a faster disposition in terms of the ones that have status, well, they go into uh, the treatment pathway and if you cannot do anything, then to uh, the mothership. And then the ones that you're not treating, faster disposition as well. You know, you win them faster, you know, you know they, they get out of the intensive care unit faster, et cetera. So, you know, we can identify uh, seizure and ictal patterns with this technology, and that aligns, as I mentioned before, with professional society endorsements, with best, best practice um, uh, uh, in, in general, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and this best practice guidance have been endorsed by professional societies such as the Neurocritical Care Society and the American Heart Association. Mm -hmm.